Creating a better life for yourself involves firstly creating some foundations and some visions and goals. And what are those visions and goals? Those visions should include where you would want to end up. For example, do you want to be happier? Do you want to have more peace in your life? Do you want to be wiser? Uh, do you want to have a more? Uh, do you want to have more knowledge in your life? Do you want to understand things more? So these things that that could be seen as a vision and a goal. And how do we get there? Another goal could be involving doing no harm to yourself and others. Now, doing no harm to yourself and others is in three categories. It's in what we say manokamang, which is mental action, vachakaman, herbal, uh, verbal, <laughs> verbal action, and uh, mano, verbal, and kayakaman, which is bodily action, right? So these three actions, mental action, verbal action, uh, bodily action, right? So not doing yourself, not doing any harm to yourself in these three actions and not doing any harm to yourself or, or others, sorry, in those three, with those three actions either. So creating a better life also is, particularly in Buddhism, is the bedrock of it, as I've spoken many times about, is morality first. But what I want to go into more is the mental side of it, is understanding how things are created, understanding how things are done, and understanding the ingredients needed to get things done. And what are these ingredients? Well, persistence, conviction, confidence, strength, fortitude, right? Those three, those five ingredients are needed in order to uh, sustain, right? Sustain the vision of your life, right? Now, the vision I'm talking about is not one just in the eyes or just a mental vision. I'm talking about a deep vision in the mind of trying to uh, always point yourself right, in the direction of wisdom, the direction of betterness, in the direction of knowledge, right? Now, right now, and always has been, but right now we're under a lot of pressure from a lot of different angles uh, in the world right now. From The world is turning upside down right now. There's, uh, it's 2022 and we're still going to war. We're still harming people. Now, also what's coming to light in a big way is also these really uh, insidious and harmful uh, views uh, and practices and uh, I would say uh, dangerous, dangerous behaviours, damaging behaviours uh, that are perpetrating evil in, in the world. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about things like human trafficking pedophilia, sacri human sacrifice, all these kind of things. Now, before you turn this video off and start saying that, uh, oh, you know, it's all conspiracy and all these kind of things. The other day I was having a chat with uh, a close friend of mine, or a close relative, I should say, I should say uh, about sources of information. Now, if the person is speaking the truth, does it matter what the source is? Now, of course, there are sources that uh, like to pump out kind of uh, false information and things like this, but yeah, but sometimes they get it right, and sometimes there are people within that organization organization who get like a conscious uh, make a conscious decision to try to set their lives right and start to try to do the right thing, even though the forces are against them, right? So the Buddha always talked about Mara being in charge of this world, the dark one, the evil one, and the army. And that extends to uh, the human realm as well. So, you know, greed, hatred, delusion, distraction, lust, right? But greed and hatred, the ignorance of greed and hatred causes a lot of problems in this world. Uh, which, and there's also the fact that there's Dukkang Aryasachang, right? The noble truth of dukkha, right? So these things um, are there. These things are there. So creating a better life is also understanding the condition, the human condition, and the difficulties, and what's uh, what will get in our way, like what obstacles will get in our way. That's why the vision is important. That's why those ingredients are important. 
and that's why steadfast steadfast application is needed as well so one would uh, understand the what's going on out there right in this world that greed and hatred delusion right lust and uh, all kinds of other ignorant qualities are out there in people and they exist within our power structures as well right they exist within our entertainment industries they exist now, I'm not talking about not necessarily blaming people I'm blaming the ignorance as my one of my teachers my preceptor always always told me when I used to ask these kind of questions so in order to create a better life we have to understand the perimeter we have to understand it's good to understand to have an understanding of what we're dealing with right now in terms of the higher level of Mara in terms of the real high mental level of distraction and, and interference that we get when we try to create a better life and we try to stay on the force of uh, good goodness wholesomeness right there's it's the problem is it's really easy to do unwholesome things it, it's really easy to lie to get what you want it's really easy to steal to get what you want it's easy to be violent when you're not respected or agreed with you know people have difficulty as uh, uh, another person said um, on this on, on on YouTube it's it's hard to take a loss people don't know how to deal with people don't know how to deal with taking a loss or being disrespected and, and so there's always a uh, there's always unnecessary reactions to this as we see uh, a lot of unnecessary killings and things like this because of just uh, words or insults or things like this and some people believe that they're rationalized there's a high moral ground to hurt people if you've been insulted or disrespected or things like this right or even if you're in different um, doctrine believe a different doctrine or a school of thought or etc etc and so this has been going on uh, for a long time so creating a better life for yourself in the Buddhist sense is to also understand you know the impermanence of things that it's not self, that the body is not self, that feelings are not self, phenomena is not self, right? And there's five aggregates which I won't go into. And I've talked about not self uh, increasingly more and more on this channel as well as impermanence. But basically it always comes down to these things. See, repetition, repetition uh, and constantly reminding yourself of what's real and what's not real is necessary especially in Buddhism it's it's a constant repetition even in meditation it's a constant repetition of folk reflecting on the in and out breath it's a constant uh, uh, repetition reflecting on there is a body there is there is feelings there is chitta there is phenomena as in the Satipatthana there's a constant reflection of abiding in not clinging to anything in in the world right so these constant repetitions repetitions important to keep your vision active, to keep you on the vision. Now, in terms of nirvana, or nirvana, or nibbana, it's important to understand, and I think crucial to understand, that that consistency, that that constant kanti, patient perseverance, is necessary along with all the other qualities like strength, conviction, application, tolerance, perseverance, uh, tolerance of difficulties, right? Tolerance of difficulties, the the ability to way through the obstacle to jump over the obstacle go through the obstacle go under the obstacle go to the side of the obstacle finding whatever means necessary to get through the obstacle now life is very difficult uh, in in a lot of ways it's difficult for a lot of people for maybe all of us life is difficult for all of us I believe everybody has their own difficulty in life or their own problems uh, either with family friends work or their or they're in situations they don't want to be in. And I think a lot of people, everybody, has some form of difficulty, uh, more some more than others, etc. But unless that only that when we say some more than others, that's if you start comparing notes, right? So that's understood understood. But the vision in your mind needs to be steadfast and locked in, right? The vision in your mind of creating a better life needs to be locked in in your mind. So that intention needs to be locked in in your mind, in your chitta. And through there, you start throwing all the other ingredients in there, like strength, conviction, right? And daily application, daily application of the principles. So what were the principles? Well, morality is a principle, and I've talked about that. Um, and, you know, I'll talk about it more and more. 
as we go, it's necessary to keep talking about these things. But then there's the concentration aspect. Then there's the development of right livelihood and the eight factors, right? The eight factors that are to be cultivated and developed, right? So those you can do in any situation, whether you're a monk, a nun, a lay person, it doesn't really matter. But though that vision in the mind of <clears throat> where you want to be, where you want to be in the sense of what type of person do you want to become, right? So this is why, uh, particularly in this tradition, we use a lot of the Buddha, the Buddha, Buddha uh, mantra or mantra, right? Australian mantra. <laughs> Should be mantra, right? Whatever. But, but in any case, the Buddha, when we reflect on Buddha, which is also, as I, I've explained, one of the four guardian meditations, and also it's Vipassana, right? Which Vipassana uh, clearly means insight, but to get insight, one needs to analyze and investigate. That's how you get the insight. But first, there needs to be a bedrock of sta stable concentration, like a certain stability is needed. It also needs to be a level of sati, like awareness of, of things that develop solidly, right? So the mind needs to be quite steady, quite stable, laser-like in order to enter, to investigate and analyze, to gain insight, right? So when we practice buddho, for example, that is visionary as well as reflectionary. So in other words, we're visioning the Buddha nature inside ourselves. And we're also reflecting on the qualities of um, the Buddha Gautama, right? Of, of the, tatha, the, the Tathagata, right? So that's really essential. See, practice, there needs to be <clears throat> some kind of vision, some kind of goal. Now, of course, if the goal is Nibbana, the thing is, what is Nibbana? Nobody knows. But what we do know is that there is impermanence, right? When I say nobody knows, the Arahant knows, of course. But I'm saying in terms of the person, of the, uh, of the Seka, of the person in practice or the Samana. The Samana does not know, but seeks, but seeks it, right? So that's an important distinction to be made. And as the Buddha always said, practice, cultivate and develop and comprehend dukkha, uh, abandon uh, avidya and tanha, cause of craving, and then re realization of nirodha, realization, sorry, realization of the cessation of dukkha takes place, right? If, if one follows the, follow, follows the cultivation and development of the eight factors. So in other words, there has to be some kind of implant mentally that this is how this is how I would like to develop. This is how uh, I would like to end up in this lifetime, right? So that need, that's essential to create a, creating a better life. And then you mix that up with the intention. Now this isn't easy because there's a lot of things, and I can't uh, talk about all of it in a I don't know ten minute video or something. Okay, so there's more to talk about this. Okay, there's more to be said about this. But in, in essence, though, uh, creating a better life starts with the, the mental application, the mental steadfast determination that you want to get there. Then you start to put all the, the verbal and the bodily actions in line with that, right? In line with, your, with the mind. And you steer the mind always to wholesomeness. You steer the mind to development of those qualities and to stay, to stay on that track. To stay in, stay on that line, on that journey, on that path, or whatever you want to call it, or to just stay here in the moment, in that state of awareness all the time, right? Where you're constantly pushing yourself, developing yourself, cultivating yourself to to betterness, and that's very important in Buddhism, right? And to do that, we need, you know, the the help of the Dharma. We need the help of the Dharma. We don't need the help of a Dharma or false Dharmas, right? But please understand that in this world, there's a lot of evil going on. It always has been. There's atrocious things going on. And the best thing we can do is not add to it, not to give to it, um, to abstain from it, and to create ourselves, develop ourselves, create a better life for ourselves, but develop ourselves. So one day we're in a position to do some, we could do some more outreach or do uh, create a different world in a certain sense. Although... Creating a different world, I'm talking about individually, like your own world, not as in the big world, because that, that to me is not realistic, right? It's just a dream. But then again, you know, who am I to, to poo-poo anyone's vision of, the, of that reality? But what we can do, what I, what I can say with, 
with uh, what, what I think is a reasonable argument is you can change your own world and maybe you can help change the world of others around you as a beginning, right? So this is why we do these practices, not just to benefit ourselves, but when we're benefiting ourselves and we're growing ourselves, we're more of use to the community and our loved ones and everybody else around us in the long run, right? In the long run. So I urge you to keep up your practice and to create a better life for yourself.